I've been using Alpine Linux for 30 days and I'm sharing my experience in one video. Let's go. Alpine Linux comes with a text-based installer, but it's very easy to use. The installation was also very fast and I breezed through it in a few minutes. I then successfully rebooted into my new Alpine installation, although it took a while to boot, which was surprising considering Alpine is very lightweight. For more details regarding the installation process, go check out the video of me switching to Alpine if you haven't already, but then I installed and configured a few things, one of those including Network Manager. Now, I could use Wi-Fi just fine because Network Manager isn't required to use Wi-Fi, but it is required to graphically toggle, switch, and configure Wi-Fi in GNOME and KDE. I followed Alpine's guide to install and set up Network Manager and its components, but Network Manager wouldn't work, and I wasn't able to find any misconfiguration at first. Later on though, I was able to fix Network Manager and get it working, so stick around to see how. I then played a video in GNOME Videos, or Totem, a screencast to be exact, and actually, unlike Arch in my previous 30 day challenge, it played without any problems, but it still couldn't play video shot on iPhone. So I downloaded a libidy to video player called Clapper, and like in Arch, Clapper worked perfectly. Then I tried installing an app in GNOME software, and the app installed perfectly without any problems, but I would still get an error message about something not being mentioned in any dot .service files. GNOME software could only manage flat packs, so maybe it tried and failed to load Alpine's repos, but I'm not sure. There was definitely some differences that took a few minutes to get used to. Like instead of sudo, Alpine uses duas, and tons of others. Instead of bash, Alpine comes with ash, which lacks basic functions like the where is command. OpenRC is also used instead of systemd. OpenRC is fine, but it's a bit harder to use, a bit buggier, and systemd usually loads faster from my experience. Systemd also provides a full suite of software, whereas OpenRC only provides init capabilities. Also, several functions like the man command wouldn't work for some reason, which is weird. One thing I love about Alpine is its package manager called APK, or Alpine Package Keeper, not to be confused with Android packages. It's really easy to use and lightning fast, installing most packages in quite literally one second and installing heavier packages in about 20 seconds. Alpine has been fine for the most part, but it was pretty slow, buggy, and clunky, and didn't perform very well, which is a problem that I've had throughout the entire challenge. I then added the white store icon theme, which went without any problems and turned out pretty well in my opinion. I specifically installed the alternative theme though, as I didn't really want my system to look like macOS. Then I ran into a problem. I use Wayland all the time and prefer it to Xorg, but unfortunately, Discord requires Xorg to screen share and do some other things. So I tried to launch Xorg because I wanted to share my screen with a Discord member, but Xorg failed. I'm not sure what caused this problem, but I wasn't able to use Xorg at all for the entirety of this challenge. Either if I logged out of Wayland and tried logging into Xorg, it would completely freeze, or on booting up my computer if I chose Xorg, I would get thrown back to the GDM login screen because Xorg would fail to start, so I'd just have to use Wayland. After that, other than consistent bugginess and performance issues, nothing crazy happened. But after two whole weeks, halfway into the challenge, I was finally able to figure out why Network Manager wouldn't work. Okay, so as you know, until halfway into the challenge, I wasn't able to get Network Manager working. And I, I was able to find out why. So if we type NMTY to try to set up Network Manager, it tells us Network Manager is not running, even though it is. So um, I then came to figure out that I made a mistake in my networkmanager.conf. So if we just uh, take a look at that real quick, do as nano slash Etsy slash network manager slash network manager dot conf okay so as you can see everything on first glance looks fine it looks normal uh until we get to this line below device over here now uh between address and yes there's supposed to be an equal sign 
but I accidentally mistyped and put a dash instead. So if we just fix this real quick, then save it, and then restart Network Manager. Oh, do as RC service. Okay, it's now started. And now if we type NMTY, it works. And as you can see, it already connected because uh, I actually did this um, midway into the challenge. I'm recording this towards the end of the challenge because I didn't record it before. But um, yeah, it basically works. As you can see here now, uh, we can manage Wi-Fi and we can edit it over here. So I'm just going to quit Network Manager TOI. But as you can see, now we have Wi-Fi. Now, I actually turned this off last time I tried it because the network uh, connection was extremely unstable. Um, like it would just crash, it would just disconnect and I'd have to reconnect. So let's just wait here for about like 10 minutes and see if that happens again. And as you can see, we got this pop up here saying connection failed. Activation of network connection failed. And so it just kind of just stops completely. As you can see, we have no internet and then it goes back on. So it's just a very unstable experience and not very usable. But um, one thing I didn't try is, so I use WPA supplicant for this, um, for this Alpine install for a network manager. But uh, maybe IWD will work. I don't know. So um, let's try that. Okay, I changed it from WPA Supplicant to IWD. And um, it doesn't show any Wi-Fi networks now. It just shows uh, wired. So IWD straight up just doesn't work. WPA Supplicant with Network Manager is unstable. And without Network Manager, internet works fine. It's stable. There's no cutouts or anything like that. It just works normally. So I'm not quite sure why Network Manager is unstable um, on Alpine, but yeah, that's another problem. After that, again, other than the usual problems, nothing significant happened until I tried to edit a video. I own a second channel alongside my friend and it's called Ninja Tux. We do unscripted distro reviews and Linux gaming content there, and I was editing our next video, but when I rendered it and saw the video, most of it was just black with big white text that said, INVALID. I edited this video twice and tried rendering it in several different formats, and I would get the same output every time. A video that had a black background and big white text saying, INVALID. To see if the video itself was the problem, I then tried rendering an older video that I made and successfully rendered an arch, and it had the exact same problem, which meant I couldn't use Alpine Linux for editing. And also, a program crash data file named core would appear in my home folder on almost every startup, even after deleting it. So, should you use Alpine Linux on the desktop? From my experience, definitely not. Alpine Linux has been a slow, clunky, and buggy desktop experience, and truly a challenge to use. You need more advanced Linux knowledge to use it, which thankfully I have, because if I hadn't, I wouldn't be able to finish 30 days with Alpine Linux, or even get past the first week. But even with the advanced Linux knowledge that I have, Alpine was barely usable. To be fair to Alpine though, it isn't really meant for desktop usage. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.